So my eureka moment comes from studying the dunnock, a little brown bird in the botanic garden. The lives of these birds are riven with sexual conflict, where a female tries to give matings to two males and the males battle for paternity. And one sunny morning I was watching the males chasing and competing for matings and the extraordinary mating display of the bird. So the male comes behind the female who raises her tail and quivers her wings and exposes her cloaca. And the male then pecks at the cloaca. And this display was first described a hundred years ago by Edmund Salou, who thought it was rather lecherous, but he didn't understand it. And on this particular morning, I noticed that during the pecking, the female made a spasm and ejected a little droplet. And there's no doubt that this is what the male was waiting for, because as soon as the droplet was produced, he mated with a brief cloacal kiss, and that was the end of the display. And I can still remember my intense excitement as I got on my hands and knees and looked for this droplet, and luckily it had landed on a little leaf. And very carefully I collected it and cycled back up Tennis Court Road and looked under a microscope. And to my absolute delight, I saw a little bundle of sperm. And this immediately made sense of the display. With lots of matings with two males, the female's cloaca is probably becoming full of sperm. So it pays the male to stimulate the female to eject sperm to make a clear passage for his own insemination. Of course, the sperm in the female's cloaca might be put there by the other guy, so this is a good swap. The sperm he's about to put in, he's certain, is his own. Now, when the chicks hatch, if two males have shared matings, they will both help to feed the brood. And you might wonder, do the males pick out their own particular chicks for special care? And the answer is no. We know from DNA fingerprinting now that shared matings often give shared paternity in the brood, but the males just use mating share as an indirect cue and use this to guide their parental effort. So this is a rare case where, because of DNA fingerprinting, we actually know more about who shares paternity than the birds do themselves.